uh, my producer, Jer, Jer Bear, who is uh, awesome, and uh, the illustrious Jim Garrow. <laughs> I'll, I like I'm that. I'm going to keep Billy back and see if that just a little bit. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there listening, we apologize for our, uh, our bad connection, and uh, hopefully we cleared it up. And if you have any questions from chat, I'd like Billy Hayes to text them to me here, and because uh, I don't have that room open, keep my bandwidth live. Go ahead, over. Okay, so uh, yeah, Jer, uh, Jim, I was uh, I was asking a question. I I had think about pimp. I had mentioned uh, what I call Obama. He's the uh, old white male time traveling pimp clown. <laughs> That's my. Uh, I that, and I, I understood everything you said there, which is the first time I've heard a full, full sentence. Oh, Marvelous. my God. I'm so sorry about this. I wish there was uh, something that I could have, maybe I could, could have psychically, psionically, you know, fixed the problem. I don't know. I wish there was I could have done to fix that problem. But Can, uh, I, ask, can I ask you a question about how, um, what I was saying with the explanation I was giving, did you get that? Yes, I did. Yes, oh, I did. Yeah. Okay, so we can jump off from there? Yes, sir. It looks that way, or it sounds that way. Marvelous. So you were asking about what I remember. I, heard well, I, I, had, I wanted to have you didn't really cover your background at all, and that's fine. We can either get to that later or not at all, depending on how you feel about it. Um, I don't mind either way. I would like to have some background, but I actually was concerned with the earlier question and questioning, um, question and answer that we were doing. How got pulled into all of this? Uh, you know, Obama, uh, there's new material to be moved as though that's something that can be done in secret. And uh, the Department of Energy and the military watch this stuff very quickly, as you had talked about, and not to mention including that they fly, you know, it's over the area when this material's moved. You got fighters actually, so you, know, you got, you got, you got uh, air support in, in the form of fire jets. So it's very serious stuff. And, um, it's not going to be something that's going to be, moved in, you know, unless they move moving through some underground tunnel, and even then the Department of Energy is going to know where it's going. But so the question was, how get pulled into this situation? That you know, Obama orders up move these generally they know they set off these um, nuclear explosions underground uh, off the coast of what was it? Uh, got it right here, Charles. Sure. Yeah, Charles. Sure. Okay. okay. Charleston. Yeah. Okay. In ocean instead, oh, in ocean instead of Charleston. So yeah, so it was uh, Charlotte there. So yeah, anyway, um, so how did you get pulled into all this? And what was the effect? Because as I understand, you've been let go or fired from your position. So you want to go ahead and explain that? Sure. Uh, um, I'm going to go far back in time. Then this last year, so you get a uh, kind of setup of of happened and why I might have been. Called to this whole thing. Uh, about January 20th, I got a call from a, a senior, a retired senior military officer um, who asked me for help. He wanted me to help him get out a message across America. Um, he knew my background. He actually knew my, my work in the covert uh, and clandestine operations for America. Um, yeah, and he, he just said, Jim, we've got to get the message out. Here's what I'm getting from uh, the folks that I got into the military. They're very concerned. Um, quite frightened that Mr. Obama's asking um, something that he termed as a litmus test question. Um, and the litmus test question was basically, uh, if you were ordered to go and confiscate arms uh, from the populace, the regular civilian uh, populace, uh, and they refused uh, your, you know, to surrender your arms, uh, would you be in a position uh, to obey an order uh, would go up to an including uh, shooting, using your uh, your armament against the population, the civilian population. And that, uh, that was basically what uh, he asked me out, and I posted that on, on Facebook, and it went viral, and, and uh, for the next few months, I was uh, inundated with the rest for interviews. So that's the precursor to what happened since. Since that point in time, of course, it took a little bit of time uh, for, for Mr. Obama to figure out that I was actually in the employ of the federal government uh, as an agent. And uh, I'd been recruited when I was 18, by the way. So I'd been 45 years in service. And, um, yeah, it took him a while to figure that out. 
uh, let me think. It took him from January 20th to September 30th, and I got the word on October the 2nd at, mid that, that night I was finished. And uh, that's the long and the short of it for my involvement there. Since that point in time, of course, we've had this uh, nuke incident, and we've had uh, contact from all sorts of levels uh, of the military getting back to me. Now that the word is out, I really am. Um, and I think someone put my name uh, out there, and I don't mean my name name as in personal name, my, my uh, call name, if you want to call it. Um, and uh, so I knew that uh, I was really the guy that they heard of it. So uh, they contacted me, military officer, one military officer of three involved in actual take charge of the nukes um, and refusing the order to turn them over uh, because they figured it out uh, that, in fact, where this was going was that the, the president was going to use an EMP against uh, Americans themselves. And so that was a fear. Where will this go from? Uh, I don't know. People have been relieved of commands, and uh, we are now actually now safeguarded by others. Yes, Chip, can so, you? so wait, wait, wait. So, so you were originally were you originally let go from your position because of speaking up about the litmus question to our troops, uh, asking them if they're willing to shoot Americans if they don't give up their firearms if uh, asked or forced to do so, or were you let go as a result of uh, discussing information uh, regarding this uh, this new material and this event? No, I was. Uh, I was actually that was a result of putting out to the pub that the military, uh, the highest levels, were being asked the best question. So, um, okay, Jerry, you have to yeah, Jim, do you have now uh, since you met you, there was a list you have all the uh, personnel of the military of over two hundred. Can you place that? Again, I don't have it directly with me. Can you place that link? In and I will have it passed to chat, and then maybe we can stir up some questions. Uh, I have somebody. I have the ch room closed right now for me, but I have somebody uh, helping me that'll relay any questions coming. And we will take calls after the second hour if you guys like to call in, listeners or uh, chatters. So this is Revolution Radio Slips. Thank you for that, and we're really supported. Go ahead. So, Jim. Um Are our troops being asked to uh, if they'll if they'll shoot Americans, and the way that uh, leads up to generals being fired and other top military troops being fired from their positions, um, you yourself uh, didn't do any background. You said you were recruited at 18, uh, so out of high school you were recruited by an by an agency, right? We don't. Say one right because you have non disclosure agreements or something. I'm not supposed to say what agency you worked for. Yes, the Official Secrets Act I've signed means and that certain I can cross certain lines, and I'm very careful in what I'm doing and, and saying, so I don't cross those lines. Okay, so uh, I, I am I to understand that the part of the result of you being outed the way that you were. Uh, exposed you to people you were working with as an agent. People who otherwise had not known you were an agent uh, became aware that you were an agent when they fired you. And um, they did yes. fire you, yeah. right? Yes, other people, yes, they did, in fact, uh, terminate uh, my long-term employment. But, um, yeah, the, the particular um, uh, officer who contacted me about the litmus test originally uh, knew of my involvement covert activities over a number of years. We'd actually uh, worked together on, on something. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I please correct me and, and break it down for, uh, for the audience and for, for me. Is there not a network of people that, that agents like yourself work with? And so even though you, even though you leave, there's a, there's a loyalty, is there not, that you folks um, – in the intelligence community have to each other even after you uh, leave the agency, no? I, I would suggest you're correct. Yes, okay. and it, it's because people have put their, their lives in your hands, basically, and have learned that you are to be trusted. 
up to and, and including uh, your life. Yeah, right. I trusted with with their lives. So, uh, so that yeah, that bond of trust is going to last beyond just uh, uh, you know being uh, fired, or quitting, or whatever. Uh, but the jobs uh, or positions in the intelligence community are uh, much more serious than you know somebody, for instance, say you know working at McDonald's building computers. Um, a commercial company that sells computers. So your work is a lot more sensitive, and uh, so uh, that that network people that remains uh, after after you were canned. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to ask you directly about uh, who they are or anything like that. But would you say that uh, there are others that you are aware of? in that agency and perhaps even other agencies uh, who are disenfranchised with what they happening with this situation with Obama and uh, with with, uh, with everything like uh, Hastings and uh, these other men being pulled off. So um, Bright and, uh, Breitbart. Breitbart, right, who made that speech that uh, got him killed. Well, it was it was the bar conversation afterwards that really got him killed. Uh, he was speaking too uh, too openly, too obviously, and, and willing to talk about what he knew uh, right in public. And uh, uh, these folks were like, "Wow, crazy!" Um, so they did him in. Uh, yeah. So yes, I'm I'm uh, confident that there's a group of people out there who are looking to me to actually continue to speak out loud in public because now. And that they know me and the position I held within our our agency. Um, I was the number two man in my in, in my uh, uh, group. Right, and so you still have a manner in which information can be passed along. You're still able to exchange information, so you're still in a position, even though you've been fired. You're a man who is still in a position to. Uh, to move and shake, to make something happen, or, you know, to get information and at least disseminate it at best. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Well, that's, that's a good thing. But, uh, well, I guess then uh, we have a lot to, to discuss, and we want to discuss the firing of these generals as we have and uh, uh, the nuclear event that occurred, uh, how and why. But I, I wanted to ask you a question um, that's related to uh, our being asked to, to shoot Americans, uh, there's a lot that goes along with that. And I wanted to ask if you're aware that the office of approval had been eradicated from military bases across America. Yes, I, I'm aware of that. Okay, and uh, do you want to? Uh, I can ask. Uh, I can I can explain what a provost marshal is, but do you want to expound on uh, how you felt about? about it when you discovered that the Office of Provost Marshal had been eradicated and taken over by uh, home rate, by security, or uh, Department of, uh, what is it, Human Sacrifice? <laughs> yeah, I like your terms. Um, well, you know, once you get to a marshal, it's a, uh, it's a um, military, legal uh, kind of a position where they really safeguard law, uh, and they make sure that everyone is acting according to law. Uh, it's their duty to report. Uh, when there are breaches of law, and bring charges to bear if, if need be. So now, um, now on the base, we might be talking about the UCM Uniform Code of Military Justice, but otherwise, what we're mainly talking about, the Provost Marshal being uh, uh, responsible for maintaining law, uh, we're talking about the Constitution law, yes? We're, we are talking basically the Constitution. In fact, everything uh, comes from the Constitution. Uh, not really, um, nothing has power outside of the Constitution. Right, nothing usurps it. So anyway, you, you were talking about the provost marshal and how right, you uh, so, felt so there's out. a so there's an office uh, that regulates or at least uh, monitors uh, whether things are done within law or outside of law, and it would be that group of people who would the first ones to blow the whistle, if you call it that, uh, to blow the whistle on orders that were not uh, constitutionally correct, they were illegal, because our oath, of course, is to um, obey the orders, sorry, the word out, the law orders uh, of those above. So, uh, 
do you remember uh, when you discovered that the Office of Provost Marshal had been uh, eradicated, taken over by a, a DHS? Do you remember how you, how you felt about that, or were you surprised? Uh, was it something no. that you knew was coming? Yeah, I wasn't surprised. You've got you to remember, we're watching the maneuver of a, of a tyrant, and so for these things to take place, it's just like, oh, well, here's another one, uh, another move, another step, stripping away uh, the process of law and order. You know, just uh, one of those things, just the way it goes. Uh, can you mute, uh, Jer, can you mute? So, uh, it, it happened, Jer, can you mute, please? So, it, it happened around 2009, if I remember correctly. I've been uh, calling her when and uh, uh, I got to talk to uh, agents for the Provost Marshal. I talked to the Provost Marshal uh, once briefly uh, for Irwin, California. Basically, I was talking to them, some MPs and JAG Corps people, about uh, the lawlessness of our county. Sonoma County is an extremely lawless place, uh, not in terms of upon the land of the people, but our law enforcement here is just out of control. You know, the courts and, and are out of control. And I had read some stories about the provost marshals uh, leaving the base with uh, military police and JAG Corp people and, uh, a few times in contemporary American history, actually pointing guns at, at uh, certain uh, agents for county or other local governments and saying you will the Constitution or will shoot you. Do you know anything about that? I've heard about it. Um, can we get on to another topic rather than talking we sure, about this? We sure can. It was just something I wanted to cover briefly. I oh, thought okay. it tied into, I, I believe it ties into our, our troops uh, being asked to shoot Americans because of, uh, you know, getting rid of the Provost Marshal and having the DHS come in there because the Provost Marshal oversees the constitutional law, as you, you were saying, and I know our, uh, our officers are very upset. I mean, I, I know that the soldiers are upset about it, you know, and then that at least is something that can give us some hope. But okay, let's let's move on. What would you? What else would we talk about then? Get back to the the nuclear. Event. Well, there are other things going on besides the nuclear event. So that should be the scariest. Listen, you've had a confrontation where the president, the commander in chief, has made orders that were unlawful orders. They were unlawful for him to make. And the people in the trenches, uh, respond, whose jobs are on the line, who had to sign off uh, on every step of the way, they stood firm and said, no, we will not break the law in doing this. Uh, and they, in fact, put their lives and their careers on the line and took a bullet for the American people. Uh, they did. They stood firm uh, and said no to a man who heretofore uh, countenanced people who said no ever in his life. So they're heroes. In my mind, they should be given the Congressional Medal of Honor. All of them, each one of the three of them should get that uh, because they've done exactly what's expected of them. They put their life and their careers on the lines knowing full well uh, that there would be a vicious assault back on them. And uh, I can't speak to what's happened to them, uh, but we haven't heard one bit uh, from two of them, and one is is even rumored to uh, no longer be with us. Well, that should be uh, a surprise, although it, it might make some of us uh, our hearts sink our hearts sink a little bit. We certainly want to see these men uh, uh, in a situation where, since they are truly American heroes, to prosper as opposed to be killed off. But uh, they defied the new world order in a very direct manner because they employed by the new world order. That the most unfortunate thing to me is that everyone in a position out there to, to do something otherwise good for uh, our situation as a country and people are unfortunately employed by uh, the Borg-absorbed uh, Illuminati, New World Order, etc. Are you uh, in communication with uh, with any of the generals who've been fired as a uh, not of, not of late, but I have in fact been in contact uh, either directly or or uh, uh, in a in a set uh, of people. Um, there are many people who are now contacting me, which uh, I'd never in 
haven't uh, heard of before, but uh, because there are very few names out there, very few people that are people are uh, noticing are standing up, and I have to be one of them. Uh, they also know who I was in terms of my position, what my responsibilities were, that I was the man for China, for America. Um, and they know, they know that in the intelligence community. Um, and I still have uh, my contacts through the schools, which I still own, though the, uh, uh, the relationship with the intelligence community of China and the uh, folks uh, that I worked with closely over all these years has, a little, has been a little bit uh, crimped. We're going to break right now. Please, we'll be right back on the top. This is Radio Revolution Radio Slips. Just mute and we'll be right back, folks. Thank you. Yeah. Probably too young to know, but the Empire is always in some kind of hell. I may have been already ruled earlier. Call your fire. I may have been really charged when I said I wasn't. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Be here Tuesday p.m. Eastern Time to catch Roxy Lopez straight from the Valley of the Sun. Cash is from Hong Trails to sovereignty and to conspiracy facts. Join us for the denied Foxy Lopez next Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Revolution Radio Freeslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. You're the good side, please. You know what the difference is between me? I make this look good. Ever feel as like human beings are being farmed? You know, it's chosen by the FDA. You're told what drugs you can take, what drugs you can't take, what drugs you must take. Your productive value is harvested from you daily. Sales tax, income tax, property tax, utility bills, mortgages, interest payments. When you exercise a bit of freedom on feed or food, traveling or other matters, the farmer acts down on you. Ever thought of leaving the farm? Learn how. Join Matt and Tammy for Leaving the Farm at 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Revolution Radio at freedomships.com, Studio A. See you there or at the feed trough. There needs some more speed records in this day and age. You need coverage. Coverage? Ah. Well, you need little root weevils to crawl around top of the camera. by Jack Nicholson, you good men, you can't have the truth. Well, you can, and Event Horizons will give you those truths. So when you're mad as hell and not going to take it anymore from that memorable scene in network, you'll know just what to do. We will draw you in and become your mission at Event Horizons. Join us Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. Noon Eastern Time at freedomslips.com at Revolution Radio. Our world team members are Dennis Nacho, John Ilias, David Dunger, Hala Cass, MD, Melanie Gritchen, Jim Mars, Kawa Harris, John Trallo, Maria Payan, Christopher Husser, DODDS, Jonathan Orchard, me, your anchor, Dr. Robin Falco. You decide not volunteer, it will not be held against you in any way. Sounds dangerous. It is very dangerous. Count me in. And that's right here, Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where it never sleeps. He's got a fire on our range to talk. This incredible race of 
does have a future, and it is in the star. I want the truth. We are not there to reclaim our rightful place. Hi, this is Robert Pacino, host of the Whole Agenda Radio Show. Starting this Friday at midnight Eastern Time, I'll set the airwaves on fire by bringing you hard-hitting guests who are not afraid to speak the truth. I'm going to make them an off again. So join the Whole Agenda Radio Show on Friday nights right here on Revolution Radio. Good afternoon or good evening, folks. Back with you again on uh, Revolution Radio. Listener supported. Please make donations. Freedomslips.com. This uh, broadcast is called uh, Stealth Beyond Reason, and I am your host, Eric Blood. We're on the air again with uh, my producer, Jer Bear, and as I said for the illustrious Dr. Jim Garrow, former agent for our uh, United States government, and uh, has been involved with many things not to mention his involvement in putting out information about the litmus test of our soldiers being asked if they'll shoot Americans, and his involvement with uh, some of these U.S. generals who've been fired for saying no to Obama when he asked them, I guess, basically to be involved in setting off nuclear weapons in our atmosphere, causing something called the Compton Effect, which would knock out all the power for from Canada to Florida, possibly Mexico as well. Jim? You think? Mexico too? Well, yeah, down into it depends on the circumference of the circle. Um, they were going to use three weapons in the atmosphere, right? Well, no, there were there was they're going to be the use of one, and if I'm properly with the uh, uh, the switch of polarity of the sun, uh, it would would have needed one to devastate all of North America. Uh, oh, okay. But <clears throat> yeah, I me, thought they were going to use three. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but let me number three. Warheads involved, and in, uh, you know they, they asked, and I guess what, what the president was probably trying to do is make sure he had enough to do the job. But uh, you know, over um, anyway, people who are unaware tend to overkill anyway. So um, what they were running on was this uh, reverse of polarity of the sun and the coordinated uh, explosion uh, in the outer atmosphere of the CMP capable nuke uh, caused uh, devastation beyond belief. Uh, for all our systems, computer and electrical systems, uh, devastating transportation, um, communications, uh, just everything. Uh, anything you plugged into your wall that had a computer chip in it would have been fried. Um, and only only through hardening is the term they use, 
issues uh, or a Faraday caging uh, could protect it, uh, these vital elements. So all instrumentation would have been down, uh, all communication in respect to uh, some parts of the military would even have been affected. Uh, Jim, so that Jim, do you see any of these um, whistleblowers or these ones that have been terminated from their duties uh, to come forward as someone as brave as you are? Uh, do you see that happening where they will be promoting uh, their justice done to the administration? Uh, well, three are dead. I suggest that the message that was meant by the killing of those three, yeah, you, I'm just one piece of information. I, I warned you I was going to put two. That's one of the of our people are dead. One discovered uh, his body was floating next to a rather large yacht uh, on Lantau Island at uh, Discovery Bay Yacht Club, uh, which is part of Hong Kong, the island of Hong Kong. And uh, that was one of our guys. Uh, second was found in uh, a place called uh, Shenzhen, uh, too far from there. Uh, he was found in his car. He'd been shot in the head uh, through the window of his car. And that side passenger window hadn't even been brought down. And the third one I can't speak of, but I just want to know that three people died. Well, and those were three, just... three of our operatives. Right. And you asked about signals being sent, and you asked about people. Uh, what really happening for right now, people are scared. Crapless, that would be the right word, uh, because the message has certainly been sent that nobody's safe. Okay. And well, how, I'll uh, one question, snow one, had to run away. One quick question then. You tell me uh, the, how how much time has lapsed uh, when the incident occurred of, of their heroes to their, their death, their untimely death? A couple weeks, maybe? Three? We're talking about this happened within the last three weeks. Wow. That's now, I've got, I've got a couple of other things that you should get out to your phone. Oh, and knowing the way programs go, we've got an hour, right? Is that what we have left, about an hour? Yes, sir. Yeah, about four minutes. Go for it, Chef. Okay, we're, we're going to need the time. Go. Roll up, rock and roll, boss. Oh, who's... Oh, you... you yeah, talking? that's that's yeah. here telling you to oh, rock oh, okay. and roll. Okay, sorry, I don't know these nomenclatures. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. roll, roll with it, Jim, please. Okay. Um, okay. We have a, we had a situation uh, a number of years ago, and I want to want to talk about because we're talking about Hong Kong. I want to talk uh, specifically about the Chinese because it's very important that people understand the um, the uh, very precarious position we are in right now with respect to the ability to uh, sound out what's going around in the world. What had Mr. Obama has done? He he has not just crippled our military. Uh, in its ability to do war, for example. Uh, rules of engagement basically are setting our troops up for, for death. Um, they can't even deliver uh, systems that they have in hand uh, till certain things are in place, which means you're holding off, holding off, holding off until the ad enemies basically got you in their sights and killing you before you can respond. So uh, our president, our commander-in-chief, is turning out to be more like the traitor-in-chief uh, in what he's expecting from our troops on the ground. Um, so let's go to what, what years ago we had smart presidents, or maybe we just had presidents who were on our side, and, and they did certain things to safeguard us. And here's one. Um, part of my task in Canada, and that's, of course, where my, uh, my operations center is in Canada, and uh, part of what I was asked to do was safeguard the Internet for the world. And uh, quite simply, um, if you're on the Internet, you know that the major network access point for all of the Internet in the world is in Chicago. And in that, there's always the danger of attack. Uh, and if something were to happen to that NAP point, network access point, uh, where the asynchronous transfer mode of everything takes place, it's right there, um, we would be in a total loss of that branch of communication is now where we feed all sorts of things through. Uh, we still have satellite, yes, but you know, the satellite communications are now uh, divvied up, as it were, uh, and use, using the Internet uh, to, to enhance that communication. So I was asked to create a, a communication company uh, that would duplicate the backbone of the Internet system in America. America had a real lot of, a lot of problems with all of the 
these little companies everywhere, different architectures. Uh, it wasn't going to work. Uh, and so for a lot of areas, it took a lot, many, many years before they actually got Internet service. And that had everything to do with the fact that we have so many little private companies doing things their own way and nothing matched. So it took all that time to get things to work together. So in order to protect the entire system of America um, and subsequently the rest of the world, I was tasked with creating a duplicate backbone from one end of Canada to the other. So from the East Coast, Fundy, um, uh, Fundy Telecom, all the way over to BC Tel, British Columbia Telecom, or Tel. Um, and uh, cable television company in Canada together into a seamless backbone. I did that using a company we formed, of course, funded by our agency or American government, called the International Internet Alliance. Having done that, having we had the ability to throw a switch, basically, in Chicago and through a, a hub that was placed in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, we could instantly fire off the duplicate backbone uh, so that the Internet in the world was secure. Never heard of this before. This is the first step publicly acknowledged that we did. Uh, you still? Yeah, yeah, we're here. You you understand the implications of what? We yes, sir. talked about. Yes, you're cutting. You're okay. So we are cutting. cutting out. Out. That's my task. Be safe. Yeah, yeah. Start again, damn it. Uh, go ahead. Try to see, keep it going. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Yeah. Well, somebody, I guess, clicked. I heard, heard a click there, and everybody that was got my funny. on my mic. Instead of okay. yeah, that's that's me shutting it off from uh, my my mic, not not the Skype. So don't let that. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on with this, but um, Jim, I hate to do this to you, but what I uh, I think it would be good if if you Said it, said it again. What well, you want me to drop the call and do it one more time to refresh it because it's it's, it's probably going to keep on going. Copy. All right, flesh it out. All right. Jim, stay Copy. back. Listeners, we'll be right back trying to get this clear for you. <laughs> 